Tuesday, June 13th, 2023. You are listening to Weather with Enthusiasm. This episode will be focused on the heat in Texas. It's something which is going to be quite magnificent. And we also have some unprecedented, maybe not unprecedented, but very unique things that are being said by the National Weather Service, especially in Brownsville. We have a heat dome that's going to be moving into the Texas area. In fact, it's already impacting very much. It's impacting Brownsville, Texas, all of South Texas, all of Deep South Texas with heat advisories in effect. A heat advisory for the Brownsville area, the criteria for that is quite high with heat indices of 111 degrees or higher for two consecutive hours. That's the criteria to issue a heat advisory. The Brownsville, Texas National Weather Service does something very interesting. They advocate for themselves. They advocate why we need actual forecasters in this day and age, and we can't just rely upon computer models. And I'm going to read to you from the National Weather Service Brownsville forecast discussion issued today, 2.54 a.m. Central Daylight Time, Tuesday, June 13th, 2023. It says like this. It says, we're going to start by looking back on Monday, not for the purpose of Monday morning quarterbacking, but rather to enter into the official record what occurred and what did not occur. Forecast highs were as follows. BRO, which stands for Brownsville, 94 degrees. The rest of the abbreviations, I'm just going to say the abbreviation. PIL hit 93 degrees. HRL hit 97 degrees. MFE 98 degrees. And TXW 97, EBG 98, APY 103, HBV 100, and BKS 102. The observed highs were as follows. Brownsville 95. So the forecast was 94. The high was 95. Next station. Forecast was 93. The high was 94. Next station. Forecast 97. High 95. Next station, the forecast 98, the high was 98. Next station, the forecast was 97, the high was 99. And the next station, the forecast high was 98, the actual high was 98. The next station forecast 103, the high was 103. And for the next station, the forecast high was 100, the high was 101. The next station forecast high 102, the high was 102. The forecast highs were the result of starting with NBM guidance, the National Blend Model Guidance, and adjusting downwards based upon the previous few days of observations. So when compared with the actual observed high temperatures, forecast stir intervention shows value. So Baruch Hashem, uh, thank God we still still need the human being this day and age. We're not holding on the level of artificial intelligence uh, being able to outdo the human being yet. Um, and hopefully, uh, it, I, I would think hopefully we never will because we need uh, people to actually be doing the job. And now here's the question, though. The question is, why were computer models forecasting temperatures to be five degrees or even more hotter than what these forecast highs were? In some cases, perhaps even 10 degrees. I have to look at what the actual uh, numbers were from the computer models. So the National Weather Service of Brownsville, Texas, answers that question. And what they say, uh, let me uh, get it over here. Um the uh, the, um, it says the so it says the bottom line it's hot and with the position of the above mentioned 500 MB ridge possibly shifting more north and west over time the heat will be maintained if not increased combined with steadily drying soils and no significant precipitation likely with the ridge hanging around the likelihood of a widespread heat advisory and possibly excessive heat warning will increase with time that's actually not what I meant to read What I meant to read is uh, this paragraph. Finally, why has there been a disconnect between NBM scorching high temperatures and actual observed values over the past several days? One reason could be the position of the 500 MB ridge, which is progged, it's forecasted by model guidance to remain centered over northeast Mexico through at least the next 48 hours. Past exceptional heat events were the result of a mid-level high centered more over the Four Corners area of the United States. Another reason could be soil moisture. 
moisture. On March 28th, the U.S. Drought Monitor indic- indicated extreme drought within Zapata County, Jim Hogg County, Brooks County, most of Kennedy County, and the western portion of Star County, with the remainder of the BRO, CWFA, the Hidalgo, Willisee, and Cameron Counties, generally in severe drought. As of June 6th, no drought exists anywhere within the BRO, CWFA counties. The likely result of multiple mesoscale convection s- convective systems producing scattered to numerous showers and thunderstorms, many strong to severe. A portion of the solar insolation is possibly being diverted for the evaporation of this abundant soil moisture instead of being used 100% for heating the air column, which would occur if soils were parched, such as in a drought situation. How long the soil moisture will be a factor remains to be seen in the coming days, especially since the 141 p.m. Central Daylight Time Monday temperatures and precipitation summary for Deep South Texas lists 0.38 inches of evaporation occurred in Brownsville, 0.36 inches occurred for Falcon Dam, 0.27 inches for McCook, 0.40 inches for Rio Grande City, and 0.15 inches for West, uh, West Laco. So these are the amount of soil moisture which was evaporated uh, as of 1.41 p.m., uh, I guess just for yesterday. I'm not sure how long of a time period that covers. So uh, we're going to see increase in heating over the next several days. This is a major heat wave. The New Orleans, Louisiana National Weather Service has asked that anyone who is able to advertise to the public should please say the following. This is what they say. Uh, Let me just get to it. I see it's... It's, uh, it's, this is what they ask. They say, whether or not Baton Rouge cracks 100 or not is not the focus here, but attendant impacts in regards to excessive heat indices is the big story. We'll see heat indices reaching at and eventually surpassing heat advisory criteria either Wednesday or Thursday, which will continue into the weekend and even beyond into early next week. Heat indices in the mid to upper hundreds to even beyond 110 will be possible, especially this weekend, and distressed that this will be a distinct impact to those outdoors for long periods of time. Please help us to message this increase in dangerous heat in all platforms reaching the public, especially now so that people can plan accordingly, as this will be the first time this summer season we encounter dangerous heat and those not from here or forgot how dangerous the heat can become can therefore prepare. And we have one other thing which comes from the Houston National Weather Service. Uh, They say the following. They say drinking plenty of water will be crucial this week. Also, it's important to remember other hot weather safety measures such as look before you lock. That's when you're leaving your car. Look before you lock Look to see that there's no one inside your car before you lock the car. Wearing light-colored and loose-fitting clothes. Remaining indoors during the hottest parts of the day, during the hottest hours of the day. Don't forget that if it's hot for you, then it's hot for your pets. If the pavement is too hot for your feet, it is also too hot for the paws. That comes from the Houston National Weather Service. We're basically out of time right now. But uh, for many people, however, this is a very exciting event very exciting event. I uh, I would like to hear from from the crowd. I'd like to know what the crowd uh, feels about this and what does the crowd think? All those people in Dallas and everything that grew up with so many years, they have so many amazing memories that were happened in hot years. What do you think about all of this heat? <laughs> I 
Oh, that's, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. As long as things are safe. Uh, Dallas, Texas, by the way, that's also another city. Temperatures going well into the low to mid hundreds. For South Texas, there is no end to the heat in sight. What an awesome crowd. What an awesome crowd. <laughs> For those people that are unfortunately not going to be able to in, enjoy the heat. For sensitivity to it, just take the necessary uh, safety precautions. Also, so the high pressure system over here, yesterday we, the New Orleans, Louisiana National Weather Service tells us it's building to a height on the 500 MB level. Drum roll, please, for this one. It's building to a height of 591 decimeter. <laughs> one of the most magnificent heat waves, which brought triple digit heat to New Orleans, which by the way, it was either New Orleans or Baton Rouge. It's only Baton Rouge. It's only happened six times since 1870. The temperature has only gone into the triple digits six times since 1870. And all six of those occurred during two separate heat waves, 1963 and 2011. The 2011 one occurred during a 594 decimeter height heat dome. This is 591. The Brownsville National Weather Service tells us it's 595. Holy cow! Perhaps that's an update or perhaps it's just the height over the Brownsville area, but this is something which is a, a very intense heat. Very intense heat. Last year, the Memphis, Tennessee mentioned the 594 decimeter, which brought hundreds to the mid-Mississippi Valley, including St. Louis. We have in the Galveston, Texas area, it's clear that dew points are, go dew points are going into the low 80s, temperatures in the upper 80s, producing heat indices in the mid and up in the heat indices of 107 to 112, I believe. That's making it feel 20 degrees warmer than it actually is. So don't let the upper 80s fool you. The fact that temperatures are sub 90 for afternoon highs, it, it, the humidity is, is skyrocketing in Galveston. Houston, Texas also has high humidity, but dew points in the mid 70s. Afternoon highs were around 100 degrees each and every day for the Houston, Texas area. Thursday, onward, perhaps even a Thursday onward. Temperatures mid and upper 90s until then. This is absolutely uh, you know, the heat is just expected to continue and there's no end to the heat in sight. As of right now, the St. Louis area remains out of the heat with highs typical, normal, well, it's still above normal for them with highs from the mid 80s to the low 90s. We will see a humidity increase in general across the Midwest starting Thursday into Friday as that Gulf air pushes all the way up north. We even saw a European computer model that showed a dew point of 70 degrees in the Minnesota area. Uh, everyone stay safe, please, and thank you for listening and have a wonderful day and have a wonderful week. Special guest on our show. Uh, what is your name? Jordan. Temperatures going into the low hundreds for the next three days. Holy cow! The Blackberry winter that comes up every year here in the Midwest on May 11th. Several additional feet of snow is expected by Monday morning. <gasps> This was in the forecast from a week ago, and the National Weather Service is finally acknowledging it today. Conditions are favorable for the development of an El Nino. We're going from one extreme to the next extreme. Despite the fact that it's 113 during the day and 46 at night, you could still do a little dance. <laughs> Recorded temperatures during heat bursts have reached well above 104 degrees. Oh, my.
my gosh. Google weather with enthusiasm and they're all going to come up. Meteorologist Sue Collette. Weather with enthusiasm is this podcast.